One thing that puzzled me, that I found inconceivable, is the idea that nations would gather in an uproar against Christ upon his return. In today's video, we will be conducting a detailed comparison showing that the Mahdi or 12th Imam described in Islamic sources could very well be the man of sin, the Antichrist. Before continuing with this video, I highly recommend watching the previous videos in the series, specifically the 70 weeks and the Prince to come part 1 and part 2, as they provide valuable context and information for understanding the topic at hand. Now without further ado, let's begin. Muslims await a figure at the end of time who is said to be the final Imam and saviour of humanity. According to Islamic tradition, he will appear before the end times to establish justice and peace on the earth, establish Islam as the only religion and will rule for a notable amount of years before the end of the world. Now the Antichrist, according to the Bible, will be an end times leader who is opposed to Christ. Here are a few details of what the Antichrist will do according to scripture. The Antichrist will be a leader of nations in the Middle East and North Africa. He is also called the Assyrian. He will implement a seven year peace treaty. He will invade Israel with a coalition of nations and set his throne in Jerusalem. He will divide the land of Israel. He would persecute and kill the holy people of God. He will be accompanied by a false Christ figure known as the false prophet. He will exalt himself in his heart proclaiming himself to be God. He honours a God of war. He will share plunder and loot between his associates. He will deny the father and son, the crucifixion and that Jesus is the Son of God. He will lead nations against Christ for the final battle. Now throughout history, Christian theologians have been speculating on who this Antichrist figure could have been. Let's take a look at some mentions. Emperor Nero, because of his persecution of Christians and his reputation for cruelty. Napoleon Bonaparte, because of his military conquests and his opposition to the church. Adolf Hitler during World War II because of his anti-Semitic policies and his role in the Holocaust. Barack Obama because of his policies on abortion, same-sex marriage and healthcare. In more recent times, many believers have identified various political leaders including presidents and prime ministers as potential antichrists due to their policies or actions that are perceived as being against Christian values. However, the Bible lays out the main objectives of the antichrist which we've already mentioned in part and none of the candidates mentioned have even scratched the surface of fulfilling these things. In fact, in all of history and all belief systems, there's only one individual who matches up with the role of the Antichrist and this individual is known as the Mahdi or the 12th Imam. According to Islamic tradition, the coming of the Al-Mahdi is mentioned in Islamic sources from Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam and is considered to be the major event in end times. He is believed to be the descendant of Muhammad through his daughter Fatima and his cousin and son-in-law Ali. Now I'm going to present a video and just listen to how Muslims describe the coming of the Mahdi. A lot of the scholars agree that the first of the major signs will be the Mahdi. Who is Al-Mahdi? Al-Mahdi means in English the awaited one and the anointed one. So the chosen awaited one. As the earth was filled with wrong and oppression, he will fill it with justice and peace. All of them are evil. Another benefit that we have of the Mahdi is that he shall be the leader of the entire Muslim Ummah. He is going to unite the Ummah after they were divided. The Mahdi shall come at a time of civil war, right? There will be many people claiming to be the Khalifa. The Prophet said, none of them shall be successful. Then the Mahdi will come and the entire Ummah shall be gathered under him. 
And we also know that he shall enjoy the greatest Khilafah ever known to the Muslims. Better than the Umayyads, better than the Abbasids, better than the Ottomans, better than all of the other Khalifas that we've had. The Prophet wasallam said that there will be come a time when the Mahdi will come, he shall give money to everybody and not fear poverty, not even count it. And he said the fruits shall grow and the crops shall produce and everybody shall live in security and peace. This is after the Mahdi spreads justice, after the injustice. We also know that the Mahdi shall rule for seven years. The Prophet said in a hadith in Abu Dawood that يَمْلِكُ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ he shall rule for seven years. So the time period of the Mahdi is not very long. There will be fitna and turmoil. The bay'ah will be given to him. He will become the Khalifa. After he becomes the Khalifa, seven years of perfect justice. Seven years where the earth shall be the best seven years of the time of the Muslims have ever enjoyed. But then something will happen. Then something will happen. And that is the Jal will come. The Dajjal will come when the Mahdi is alive. The Mahdi will be alive and in charge of the affairs of the Ummah and he shall battle the forces of the Dajjal. Now, I know there's a lot to absorb there, but let's delve into some details about the Mahdi from Islamic Hadiths. The Hadiths is a compilation of sources containing the sayings and actions of Muhammad which are considered an important source of guidance for the Muslims. Here are a few hadiths. The world will not come to pass until a man from among my family, whose name will be my name, rules over the Arabs. Allah will bring out from concealment al Mahdi from my family and just before the day of judgment. Even if only one day were to remain in the life of the world, and he will spread on this earth justice and equity and will eradicate tyranny and oppression. Even if only a day remains for Qiyamah to come, yet Allah will send a man from my family who will fill the world with such justice and fairness, just as it was filled with oppression. The promised Mahdi will be among my family. God will make provisions for his emergence within a single night. Here we see Muhammad the Prophet of Islam speaking about a ruler who would come from his lineage before the Day of Judgment. This ruler, the Mahdi, will cause Islam to be the dominant religion and he would enforce Islamic laws throughout the world. Now let's take a look at how long the Mahdi is said to rule within the Hadiths. The Prophet said, The Mahdi will be of my family and of the descendants of Fatima. He will have a broad forehead and a pointed nose. He will fill the earth with justice and fairness as it was filled with oppression and tyranny. He will rule for seven years. The Prophet said, The Mahdi will be from my descendants, from the children of Fatima. He will fill the earth with justice and fairness, and he will rule for seven years. All the Hadith state that the Mahdi will rule for a period of seven years. These teachings about the Mahdi are highly significant in Islamic eschatology and have been a topic of discussion and speculation amongst the Muslims throughout history. According to Islamic sources, the Mahdi is also said to conquer Israel and Jerusalem. An army will come out of Khorasan and they will raise the black flags. They will conquer Jerusalem and rule justly. When you see them, then pledge your allegiance to them, even if you are to crawl over the snow. For that is the Caliph of Allah, Al-Mahdi. An army will come from Khorasan and will conquer Jerusalem and rule with Islamic justice. The mention of the black flags would indicate that the Mahdi is within their ranks. Muslim nations are required to pledge allegiance to the Mahdi and give him the bayah, which is a pledge of allegiance. Now just imagine 1.9 billion Muslims today at the command of the Mahdi when he arrives. Some nations that have outwardly proclaimed to usher in the Mahdi are nations such as Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Pakistan, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, 
Afghanistan and many more nations. Now the Mahdi will not work alone, he will be aided by another individual known as Isa, the Islamic Jesus. The Almighty Allah will prolong this day till my son Mahdi reappears and Isa bin Maryam descends to earth and recites prayer behind his eminence. This earth will be illuminated from east to the west. This hadith describes the return of Isa, who will descend from heaven and join forces with the Mahdi in the end times. Together they will fight against the forces of the Dajjal and establish justice and peace on earth. And the hadith also mentions some specific actions Isa will take, such as breaking the cross, which is to deny the cross, and eliminating the practice of taking jizya, a tax imposed on non-Muslims in Islamic societies. Given only two options for non-Muslims, convert to Islam or death. In this segment of the video, we will be using all the information gathered and formulate a side-by-side -side comparison between the Mahdi and the Antichrist. You may find it quite astonishing. The state of the world prior to their emergence. Both the al Mahdi and Antichrist will emerge during a time of great conflict in the world with wars, rumours of wars and famines. Both the Antichrist and the al Mahdi are political and military leaders. Both the Antichrist and al Mahdi are not only political military leaders but hold significant religious influence. Nations at their command. The Mahdi will be followed by an army of loyal Muslim followers and together they will implement Islamic justice. The Antichrist will lead nations that are majority Muslim today. Both will be accompanied by a Christ figure. The al Mahdi will be accompanied by Isa, the Islamic Jesus. The Antichrist is also accompanied by the false prophet who is also referred to as the second beast in Revelation. They both rule for seven years. The Mahdi will bring about a period of peace and justice according to the Hadith and his reign will last for seven years. The Antichrist implements a peace treaty for seven years. Both share plunder and loot amongst their followers. Both will conquer Jerusalem. The Mahdi's army of black flags will not stop their conquest until the black flags are placed in Jerusalem. The Antichrist will also lead the surrounding nations around Israel against it. Both have a targeted conquest against the Jews and Christians. The Mahdi will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared, otherwise they will be killed. The Antichrist will aim to kill the Christians and the Jews. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. Finally, the Mahdi and Isa will war against the Dajjal and the Antichrist and false prophet will war against Christ. The Mahdi and Isa will lead Islamic nations against the Dajjal and his army. The Antichrist and false prophet will lead nations against Christ and his armies. With this understanding, we can conclude that the al Mahdi, who is awaited by 1.9 billion Muslims around the world, very well could be the Antichrist described in the Bible. As believers, what are we to do with all this information? God knows the ending from the beginning, and Christ told us everything in advance so we will be comforted and be as watchmen in these times. We must be prepared, turn and repent from our old sinful ways, and stand firm in the midst of adversity.